Hey y'all, it's Praki. Welcome back to my channel. Today I took some time to make some food items for my son. He just turned 10 months and I do a combination of a practice called baby led weaning. I'm sure some of you are familiar with it as well as traditional purees. Now baby led weaning, it's not for everyone. I get it. It's all the rage in the social media streets right now, but it's not for everyone. Everyone's not comfortable giving their baby big chunks of food at like six, seven, eight months. I get it. I was that mom. So with my girls, I did a combination of purees and BLW. But for my son, um, I found that I'm leaning more towards the BLW with this one, just because I don't have the time that I had before. Like I would make big batches of purees, different stuff. So I wanted to make sure they were getting all these different nutrients. And I don't have the kind of time to be making two different meals. I don't. So. We're leaning more on the baby led weaning and he still does get purees. And today I gave him mangoes and bananas for breakfast. And I also made him some apples, um, some carrots and some broccoli just to take for the next few days in addition to whatever else I give him. So he'll still munch on other things and have snacks and whatnot, but this will be like his main foods for the next few days. If you have any questions about baby led weaning, you wanna know more about it, its benefits or whatever, I can leave like a link in the comments. Basically from what they say about it, I found it all to be true. Like, like he definitely he's very open to trying new things he enjoys textures he enjoys flavor he likes his food to be seasoned okay um, and he just really does well with eating all around like I said if you have any questions leave it in the comments I'll make sure I respond and I'm gonna go ahead and get into this voiceover Okay, so before I decided to film, I'd already started the apples. So I basically, I washed them. I kept the skin on and I cut them in four and used a knife to cut out the part with the seeds. Um, I kept them pretty big because I want him to be able to grab them and bite into it without it falling apart. And the skin also helps it, you know, from just crumbling like that. Well, not crumbling, but <laughs> turning to mush and falling apart. I cooked it till they were tender all the way around and I could poke a fork through the skin. I didn't rinse them with cold water. I wanted them to just drain on their own and kind of air dry and get to a room temperature before I package them up. You could see me testing the texture. So they're definitely soft, but they're not breaking apart as you can see. That's really important um, to, you know, so that baby can grip it and let their mouth do the work basically. So I split them in half. This was about seven apples. I'm gonna freeze half of it and then he can eat on the other half for the next few days. I'm really funny about stuff going bad. So most of the times when I make batches of stuff for him, I will freeze half of it, even if it's just for like three days, okay? So yeah, you just see me packing up the apples um, to put away. And next up, I gave him some mango and banana to eat on. Uh, he's got his teary streak because he had dropped a piece of mango. He was so mad. But anyway, I just get the big part, uh, the, the widest part, excuse me. I slice it and then I go and I cut that part in three. And it's perfect size for his hands to grip. The skin helps keep the mango from totally falling apart while he eats it. And he just knows to eat the inside, you know, he sucks on the skin. With the banana, I took the skin off. I cut it in four, uh, basically one time the short way, one time the long way. When you place it on a tray, make sure you place the rounded side on the tray because if you place the flat side, it'll be hard for baby to pick up. And you know, that makes for a very angry baby. So yeah, really easy to eat, really easy to grip. And the banana wasn't very soft, so it was good for him. Next up, I got to the carrots and the broccoli. So I'd already washed them, I peeled them. Y'all make sure you're washing your produce, okay? I just use a little like vinegar and water. Some people use baking soda. Similarly to the bananas, I cut these in four. Um, if it was like a big chunk after I cut it in half, I might've cut it in three. If it was a smaller chunk, then I just left it as it was. The idea is basically to, again, make sure it's not too big, not too small. You don't want it, like baby, to pick it up and then like it squishes and crumbles in their hands. You want it to be a size enough where you can cook it and it doesn't fall apart, but it still can get soft enough for baby to eat without teeth, basically. So you can see, this was a smaller piece. I think I did end up cutting that one too. But yeah, so I'm just zooming through. I prepped the rest of these carrots. I wanted to jump in real quick and say, uh, first of all, if you're enjoying this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Also, if you want more information about baby led weaning, check out Solid Starts on Instagram. I'll make sure I leave a link in the description and I might put it in the comments too. Solid Starts, they give you so much good information to help you on your path towards and during baby led weaning from sizes and portions, um, ideas of different foods to use. And it also addresses that big fear of choking or gagging and understanding the difference between 
between choking and gagging it's definitely not the same and one is okay while one you know you want to look out for um but anyway back to cooking so once I finished prepping the carrots, I went ahead and put them in a container so that I could take them to the pot. I'd already had some water boiling. And one thing I'll say, when I cook these carrots, I make sure they're covered in water because I really want the carrots to get nice and, you know, cooked even basically. If you do just a little bit of water, you might have a more difficult time achieving that. So lots of water. I let it cook for a long time. Again, not too mushy, but tender. And while the carrots are going, I went ahead and got going on the broccoli. So broccoli is super easy to prep for baby led weaning because they're pretty much already the right size when you pick them off the, whatever you call that, florets or something. So again, I just use my hands and I pick them off. And then as you can see, like they're the perfect size. These are good for baby to pick up. The stems, he can hold with his fingers. He can bite them with his mouth. These are perfect. So. Once I get those out, then I use a knife to cut the smaller pieces. And this is for my girls too, so I'll probably give them those bigger chunks. And I'm just doing the same thing with the second broccoli. And you can actually serve that big part too um, that you just cut off, but you have to make sure you steam it first and get it really tender before you add the rest of the broccoli. One thing with broccoli, you know, it cooks really fast. Doesn't take a lot of work at all. So unlike with the carrots, I'm not going to cover that in water. I'm just going to lightly steam that one and just stir it as it goes. It might take maybe 10, 15 minutes for broccoli. I added a little salt, a little bit of basil. If you're here in Kenya, that's the salt brand I use. In America, I do use the, uh, the pink salt as well. But yeah, just a little salt, a little basil. You can add like some olive oil or some margarine. Let that steam. I went back to the carrots to check on the carrots and they're doing really good again lots of water so that they can cook nice and even and while I let that cook went back to the broccoli and stirred that up just bottom to top bottom to top and oh I meant to tell you I put the seasoning in the broccoli early because I really don't like my broccoli breaking up a lot so once it starts getting soft I don't even stir it anymore by the time I went back to the carrots, it was about time to go ahead and add some seasoning, maybe two thirds of the way done. So I just added like some salt, some basil, some garlic powder, onion powder, a little bit of olive oil. Let that cook some more until it was done. By this point, the broccoli was done. As you can see, it's tender. It's not mushy. It's not like super dark colored. You see me sticking the fork in it. So baby can hold it without it crumbling, but it's still soft enough to munch on. And yeah, that's pretty much it y'all. So the carrots, eventually they were done. And same thing with the broccoli, tender, soft without being mushy. And that's what you're looking for. Okay y'all, so that's it. As you can see, it was very simple to do. Everything took me maybe around an hour, um, not long at all. And I made like what, four or five different things. Um, so one thing I can't say enough, make sure you don't make the stuff mushy. You don't want baby to pick it up and it just smushes, unless you're going for, you know, texture experience. But as far as the safety and the eating, it doesn't have to be mush, but it also doesn't need to be over, you know, too hard because they got to be able to get through it with their gums or their little teeth. My son doesn't have teeth yet, so he doesn't everything with his gums but uh, if you want to see more videos like this even puree videos meal ideas I do plan to have more of that coming because I finally got a tripod here in Kenya I am still in Kenya <laughs> um, let me know in the comments any questions let me know in the comments like and subscribe and until next time y'all be easy